All right. Hi, right, let's see over here. Uh, I want to briefly talk about this build, which I have come up with. Uh, no one else is playing it so far. Uh, and I thought yeah, it is pretty decent because of how cheap it, gets, it, it, it costs to get online. Uh, and then how fast it farms to be able to transition to an end game. Now a few disclaimers ahead of time. Uh, this is a reasonably strong build, but it's not as strong as stuff like uh, anything Whirlwind, basically. Because Whirlwind right now is overtuned. And because it's overtuned, uh, there are very few skills that will compete with it. The bright side about this build is because um, you are using an ability that can be used by daggers and claws. It allows you to tap into a market which isn't really uh, as you know scrutinized, right? People don't uh, look for these items as much, and therefore you can kind of get away with uh, a much cheaper gear. So, for me, I kind of was able to get maybe about four million damage under one FE. So FE is this currency here. Um, what's it called? Uh, flame. Elementium, all right. It cost me under one flame elementium to just get the build off the ground. With that, you should be able to find T7 uh, maps, not bosses, maps, uh, fine. Uh, and with T7 map farming, you should be able to get uh, basically just get a crap ton of currency. And then you can decide how you want to transition the build and whether or not you want to still stick with this uh, particular build. Um, in this case, I've still continued to stick with it. Uh, and uh, I'm starting to realize a bit of issues, mostly because Frostfire is a pretty terrible class. Um, so this is unfortunate, let me just show you. So as you can tell, Frostfire is here at 4, 4%. And obviously the best class for this, uh, if you were actually, if you wanted to try this, I would suggest not doing it on Frostfire and doing it on uh, Berserker or Reha. So just ahead of time telling you ahead of time if you want to play this build you're always better off with berserker and not this but since i'm already here and i'm playing a frostfire hopefully they'll buff it eventually but for now uh if you're just starting this out from scratch berserker is probably your best bet so i'm gonna go through a few of the core mechanics about this build and generally how it scales so a few core mechanics of this build is that you're going to be using spiral strike uh, as your primary damage source. I have a level 21 here because a uh, level 21 Spiral Strike is only 15 uh, Flame element, flame Elementiums or FEs. Uh, we'll just call them E's, right? We'll just call them Elementiums because it, honestly it's a mouthful. All right, so Spiral Strike, the level 21 costs only 15 because not many people are using this as a primary damage skill. They're using it as a mobility skill. But I'm trying to make a point here that it has a primary damage skill. It does a pretty significant amount of damage. And the reason why it does a pretty significant amount of damage is because uh, it dashes forward and deals damage multiple times to enemies. The higher attack speed you have, the more times you deal damage. So you get a weird um, multiplier on this because uh, attack speed not only scales the activation speed of this particular ability, but also scales the amount of hits uh, this ability does. So I'm going to show you this. Uh, say, so... So this is one attack, and you can see the amount of hits I do here. It's not one. It, you can see it's a crap ton of hits. And all of these hits are, uh, in this case, for me, a 91% damage multiplier. But if you're using a level uh, 20, it will be an 84% damage multiplier uh, per one of these hits. So you're basically multi-hitting for a lot. Uh, and that has some advantages. Okay. The other thing as well is this power strike. Uh, is limited to one-handed swords, claws, and daggers. So swords are expensive because everyone's using it for uh, for for uh, whirlwind. But claws and daggers are really really cheap, right? You can get the same DPS claw and uh, and dagger, or rather claw, uh, if you're deck scaling because daggers can't deck scale. Uh, you can get a similar one to a similar DPS for sword about half the price. Um, so just saying, this is the reason why you're going spire strike as well. Uh, you can get pretty good weapons uh, for very very cheap prices. Okay, so this so now that we know we're scaling attack speed and we're going spiral strike, what is the next thing you want to look up for? So we're looking and now we know there's a lot of fast hitting abilities. What do you want to do is you want to get um, a scaling mount mechanic, a scaling mechanic that works well with multi hit. Uh, it's kind of like what what it's kind of like what one per se, but 
your mobile while you're doing this. Right. So um, in this case, I'm using shock. So what shock does is, uh, let me explain it to you. An ailment that may be triggered on hit. So every time you hit, you shock a target. Shock to enemies take secondary lightning damage equal to the base shock damage when hit. So whatever damage you're hitting the mobs for, or the enemy for, uh, you're gonna do a percentage of that damage uh, on multiple on, on subsequent hits. And shock can stack kind of indefinitely, right? And uh, it's kind of like impale. So if you play Path of Exile, it's basically an elemental impale, right? So by right, uh, base shock damage as in shock multiplier uh, or shock damage as a multiplier gives three percent up to twelve times, uh, and it's obviously beneficial for you if you multi hit a lot because that means you're gonna exhaust your shocks much faster. So it's a lot more uh, constant DPS. It's not just a spike of DPS, but constant DPS. So three percent times twelve is only a measly thirty six percent, right? And if you're applying only one shock. That is only a 30%, 6% more damage. Sounds pretty pathetic, right? But in this case, it is really good because you can uh, get this chest with the corruption. And the corruption for this chest, I, I kid you not, <laughs> this is one flame elemental at max. One, uh, one E at max, right? And mostly because uh, nobody's using this chest, right? So if you have a shot two more times on critical strike, that means that every time you hit, you get a potential three shocks. So if your so your addition your, your hit existing hit will probably apply one and you apply two more additional shocks. So there's three. So you're multiplying this shock uh, by three so that's a 96 uh, percent more damage right Now let me show you a few more things and the reason why this oh, is actually pretty nice. So if you go to bones. goddess of or, or rather blade runner, gain favors five percent of, of lightning damage hit, as base shock damage. So this goes from 3% to 5%. That's a total of 8%, right? And then you have uh, shock one more time on critical strike. So that means every time you critical strike, you're going to apply four shocks, right? So a four times eight times 12 is a, my God, my math sucks. A six times four. 388. It's, it's a 388% more damage <laughs> multiplier. So with this Blade Runner, uh, with this uh, Conductive, with me with this uh, Medium Talent, we shot more, one more Critical Strike. And with this chest, uh, with this chest with the Corrosion, which is this one. So Critical Strikes always shock targets, right? So 100% chance of shock. Uh, you're going to do uh, 388% more damage. So that's 488% total damage. Um, and that's a ridiculous scaling. That's a, that's a ridiculous amount of scaling, right? Burning. So it's if this is one... Okay, so if the chest is one flame elemental, or one element E, um, you can get a non-corroded version for basically nothing. I think you can get it for like one shot. It's, it's super cheap. Okay, then for weapons, right? If you're wondering what weapons you should use to start this build, the answer is pretty straightforward, and I'll show it to you. Help yourself to the catalog. So if you go to uh, daggers, I believe it's a dagger. Weapon. Okay, this is a dagger called Fire Lord's Blade. This is also ridiculously cheap. All right, you can probably get this for like look at this. It's only one, <laughs> one shot, All right? So this dagger and that uh, chest armor is all you really need to scale. Okay, if and one more thing, if you want to do a, a build that gives you blur as well, there is a amulet that gives you blur on distance traveled, so you have a pretty nice defensive layer. So you go this two fire lords blade, you go that chest armor, and you go this trinket. Uh, what's it called? Uh, chain behind the curtain. But I think this is a little more expensive. Yeah, you might have to snipe one cheap. But basically, these three items will make you pretty tanky and do a significant amount of damage for cheap. Uh, the rest of your other slots will just be resistances and life. I can yep. feel ice and fire inside. 
Okay, so then scaling the damage. So right now, uh, when I okay when I first started the build and I went that low cost route, uh, I was doing maybe about three to six million uh, damage on single target. Uh, I've since transitioned and upgraded this belt, so it does considerably more than that. If I can show you this, it might be a lot easier. And it's about 35. It's not insane by whirlwind standards, but it's pretty nice. Okay. And obviously, if you were using a Berserker or using Rehan, uh, you're gonna do a lot better because frost fires, <laughs> frost fires are hero trait sucks. Anyway, so let me show you a bit of mapping and then show you some of the end game scaling or what I have done so far, uh, and why I've hit thirty mil from three to six mil. Uh, let's see which one do I want to do? This one probably. So generally your maps kind of like PoE, I don't really like to sit on maps and figure out like purely optimal strategies. I do an Elk and Go, which is just just fast feeding Tristan. No because I kind of travel fast, I really don't want to look at my screen, I'm actually just looking at the mini-map at the top left. As usual, speaking through stuff, auto loot is your best friend, as well as the loot the loot pet. <laughs> you don't really have to buy the loot pet, you get it from just leveling up your what's it called? Season pass. You don't have to buy the season pass, you just, you just get it automatically, I think at level 15 or something. So this one. Yep, if you want a pack sphere and it's a follow mode. Yep. Okay. So let me do one more and then you can kind of have a pretty decent look at this. Two cards. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna use this and then use that to just max out cards. So currently my strategy for mapping is to just uh, use card mechanics to find for uh, optimal combination of uh, currency card strats that just give me a lot of flame elementiums. So far I have found maybe about hmm, 600? 600 to 800 flame elementiums from 16th of October. It's not too bad. Could be playing a lot harder but uh, I am uh, times chilling. Not very thorough sometimes, like see the top left hand corner. Especially a map like this one is a little bit annoying because uh, there's so many corners in the corner. I actually hate this map. Okay, cycle for more cards. A 
Oh god, there's another these maps. I swear these stairs will be the death of me. That's what I'm looking for. I'm just basically gambling for currency cards, and then uh, you can get rolling. Oh, I like this map. I wonder how I can take the movement. I'm just looking at the top left hand corner and looking at the map. Oops. Seven more. There's a row. Uh, I four left, I think. I think two. I think what I'll do is I'll run these two and then run this and then this and this. Unfortunately, didn't get the optimum strategy, but it happens. Oh, is that the one with the mobs that blow up? I don't consider dead until uh, you wait for the worms to pop up.
Take it. Is that all you got? I'm out of mana. Now. Oh, I really hate these ropes. This layout is pain. Should be end of one series of runs. Yeah, it's the end of one series of runs. So I'm going to go talk about a bit of the endgame scaling. So you can see here, I attack pretty fast, move pretty fast, and I'll show you why. So if you look at the uh, attack speed on my main hand and my off hand, it's at plus to 11 attacks uh, per second on both. So it's 10.85. <laughs> so it's uh, if you're wondering why the attack speed is so high, uh, and why there's so many crits? Uh, the answer is because uh, the crits are high because I do lucky crits. So if you go to talents, yeah, damage dealt by your minions uh, against shocked enemies triggers lucky. So you are lucky for your damage, which is nice because your damage range is pretty high for lightning. Like, uh, so if you see here, damage range for lightning is. 14.2 to 71.8 so that lucky roll makes it do way more damage and then secondly if you go to ranger um no not this one 
Critical strikes of the lucky effect while having at least 50 further rating. So when I have 50 further rating, so it takes me a while to get there sometimes. But when I have 50 further rating, um, uh, I start to crit a lot more because it's lucky. So this is before 50, now this is after 50. And uh, basically, uh, <laughs> Because you create a lot more, you can stack a lot of uh, more shocks on your target. All right, let's go on to uh, attack speed. Why is my attack speed so high? So let me explain. Uh, my attack speed is mostly high because uh, of this. All right, I'm gonna show you. So I'm deck stacking. So I'm getting a flat damage per 16 dexterity, flat damage per 12 dexterity. So that's where I'm getting a lot of my flat damage from. And then uh, if you go and look at my uh, talents, Goddess of Hunting has this thing called Perception, 20% attack and cast speed, attack speed and cast speed, uh, one, one attack speed and cast speed per 15 dexterity. So I'm getting a lot of my attack speed from this. But why is it 10? So with this alone, it shouldn't be more than, like it should be 6 or 7. But what's happening here is I have a item um, that gives me versatility. So, a versatile. 100% of bonuses from reductions to cast speed also apply to attack speed. <laughs> that means I'm getting double the amount of attack speed from my deck scaling. Uh, that's how I'm getting such insane amount of uh, attack speed. Yeah, so that's pretty much how it scales. You deck scaling for flat lining, and then you're deck scaling to double dip your attack speed and cast speed, uh, and get a ridiculous amount of attack speeds. Spiral Strike. Uh, gives you more like a pretty nice multiplier on attack speed so it not only just uh, improves the speed of your uh, activation but it also improves the amount of times of the hit of that spiral strike so yeah that's where a lot of damage is coming from now let me go through skills so for spiral strike high voltage uh, because lightning damage is nice uh, Shock is kind of okay, but the shock duration is, I mean, I mean it's not that helpful, but it's, it's useful. Uh, I think it's mostly the 34 extra lightning damage. Added lightning is uh, always great. I'm probably sure I can swap this off for something else, can I actually? I might be able to actually swap, swap it off for something else, because so this is just minus 20. This is 5 more, right? 5.5 5 more. Focus is hmm. I actually could uh, do more damage. Actually, well, that's cool. I guess the other flat is no longer giving me a lot because I'm getting so much of the eggs. Oh, I'm learning something today. Um, wow. This is also pretty massive. Well, let's try this. Um, I don't really need the shock duration there. I can try this. I'll I'll just run it on. Supposed to scrum focus on hit. Five additional times. Five. This is higher. I get critical strike. I mean, I'll run this and then we'll see. It looks less on paper, but it should do more. Anyway, so uh, attack focus, critical strike, rating increase, anything that just gives you more damage. 
um, and doesn't cut your attack speed. Melee knockback is only because I have this, but you don't run it if you don't have it. So because Ranger gives me uh, more damage based on knockback distance, uh, and that gives you really sizable amount of knockback, this is actually really super good for that reason. Other than just because uh, you get Fortify, so um, you take 25% less damage. Uh, lightning piercing is just good because you don't really have anything else that pierces lightning. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, this is good because no other lightning piercing. Uh, so this is for uh, Berserk's nice because you get attack and spell critical strike rating, but also because you get a uh, uh, way to heal yourself. Yeah. Okay. Uh, for this. Bloodthirst, you get just attack speed and move speed, right? Yeah, attack speed and move speed. Wristwind is nice because it gives move speed and invasion. You get Iron Fortification, which is more fist to Ellie that you take. So, um, what is it? Uh, Gemma, which is this kind of build uh, class, takes uh, converts 40% of incoming element physical to elemental. And then with this, you, you convert 60. So you don't really don't need that much uh, physical damage reduction. You don't need to run armor evasions nice as well. <coughs> Pulse Rage is good. You use it with Death Will, so that you don't have to health cost reduction. Or rather, it doesn't cost health. Um, extend duration, cooldown reduction, and Mania. And then uh, Curse on Hit, Electrocute is great. Uh, Fearless, Electric Conversion, and Magical Source with Seal Conversion. So I do reserve a bit of life through this. Not that much though. I can feel yep. ice and fire so that's all there is to it. Um, let's free see the damage right now. So for single target damage, this is mostly what you're gonna do. You're gonna center your character at the middle of the screen, and you're just gonna click hold the or your right click on the middle of the screen, where the enemy is. Yep. All right, that's all there is to it. Uh, this build is okay for mapping. It's actually great for mapping. Uh, bossing is kind of an issue because I need to figure out how to boost my defenses right now. I don't think it's that good. Um, but yeah, I'll try to work on it. Alright. I guess that's all. Peace. Thanks for dropping by. If you need any questions, or if you have any questions you want to ask, let me know. Uh, peace.